Welcome to the fucking show. Welcome to the show. Have a seat, my nigga. Recline back. Real niggas making a speech. So it's it- just Mars podcast. We really appreciate the love. You know who it is, man. S O E Cash Cow. You know where to find me. And today we're back, okay? And we got a special guest in the building, um, DJ Shiny Shine. Salute. Nerve DJs. And of course, we got a new host in the building today. And uh, he can introduce himself. Yo, what's up, y'all? This is Richie Carlisle. Uh, sitting in with the Smart Ass Podcast. It's an honor and pleasure to be down with the crew. I appreciate it, man. And I appreciate you as well. Appreciate you for having me. So, let's get down to these uh, to these questions because I know it's a lot of things that people want to know about you as well as Nerve DJs and about what you guys got going on in the city. So, first and foremost, who are you, where are you from, and how you become... DJ Shiny Shine. Well, I'm DJ Shiny Shine, 30 plus years, born and bred right here in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, been doing this for a long time. Started when I was 14 and partnered with my buddy, rest in peace, DJ Joe Boom. You know, we've been everywhere from uh, Coliseum, Dad's, Cotton Club, Verts, Riviera, the Sportsplex. Pretty much if you went to high school throughout the 90s, late 80s, two, 2000s, if you party, we was the entertainment. So. Now, I've always been a consistent DJ, man, just doing a lot of shows, a lot of events, but I dabble in some of everything, so. Okay. Damn, you said Verts? Yeah. Cotton was, Club? Yeah. Sheesh! <laughs> right, damn, that, that, Yo. Man, that, those were the days. Made those were the middle days, man. <laughs> those were the middle days. a lot of babies. <laughs> man, listen. <laughs> All right, so, um, being a DJ, I know that uh, with Nerve DJs, I think you guys have broken a lot of different records throughout the industry. What are some of the records that, you know, you feel as though you were known for breaking or you broke yourself? Like? Well, a lot of artists come through the door, so a lot of popular artists now, like Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion, you know, they were all, came through Nerve DJ's doors at one time or another. So everybody's career is at some point starting out, no matter where you are, by being an international brand. You got to come through Nerve DJ's to kind of get your feet wet, so to speak because we network with everybody. Like we still do South by Southwest, which is a huge stage performance down in Texas. Then we do our annual showcases here down at Earth in the Odeon. Then uh, we still in connections with uh, Big Half with 300 and Capital Structure and Def Jam. So it's a lot of major networking always going on. It's always about networking and building bridges. Like, you know, the, our motto has always been, we, we break your uh, stacks, not your tracks, not your stacks. Yeah, that's so, the motto. You know, we live by the brand by that man. No, we not, we're not here to rip people off. We're here to give people opportunities to be heard everywhere. We do everything from BDS bands, media base. So you come to us, we got packages from $500 to $20,000. You know, it right. just it being, depends on what your budget is. Okay. All right, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Rich, you got any questions, man? Anything you want to yeah, ask? Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, through your long, legendary career, uh, just tell us about like one of your favorite moments, you know, in terms of dealing with a celebrity. Oh, that's funny. Uh, I always say it's one of my favorite. Was one of was one of my favorite stories, but one of my worst stories. Uh, <laughs> big timers back in the day. Uh, they came to Cleveland and uh, they pulled up in the big tour bus. I call this the quickest rip off of history. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear this. Yeah, they literally came in. Um, it was supposed to have been, I think, like an hour show. I don't even think it lasted twenty minutes. And uh, it was super late. There's kids and people everywhere because, you know, Cash Money was that, that name. It was a household name during yeah. that time. So they pulled up in the tour bus, you know, security's keeping the path clear for them. They go in the back. They say, hey, man, we need you. Come on stage and, you know, DJ for us. All right, cool. Opportunity. I'm get up here. So I didn't know that I was about to be the butt of the joke, <laughs> so to speak. And, um, they started the song, he was like, we're going to start the song, then we want you to stop it and take it to the top. All right, cool. So they like, DJ, drop it. So they dropped it, then, ho, oh, ho, hit the button. And Maddie Fresh turned around and said, oh, here we go. We got a DJ trying to get his 15 minutes of shame, fame. Somebody want to get their shine now. I was like, you know, I was a young hot kid, <laughs> so uh, it wasn't even about, like, DJing no more, like, participating. It's like, I'm ready to put hands on these cats. <laughs> Gotta set your personal feelings aside from business unless they correlate. So, you know, it's just one of those times where I had to, you know, swallow my pride and put the red needle at the beginning of the record. And they literally performed one song, had a guy named TQ come in and do a second verse, and they literally walked out the door. 
Wow. Yeah, 20 minutes. Oh, man. That, that's terrible. Okay, cash money. That. <laughs> <laughs> really, baby? Yeah, Bird yeah. man? What the fuck? Yeah, no. Yeah, we, we know how they do. Let me know how they do. Um, okay. You know, I did not mean to, like, open up boom. You know? <laughs> no, no, no. It's all an experience, man. You yeah. know, life takes you on journeys in this, and man, especially yeah. for DJing. Like, you know, I, I was at the Cotton Club when uh, Lil' Kim performed. It. It I was going to ask you about that, because yeah. that was one of my favorite, um, you know, nights. Yeah, it was you know just probably, was probably the most epic night in nightclub history for an artist in Cleveland. It was... Oh, beyond capacity in there. I'm more than sure that we was over the, the limit restriction of people. We probably mm -hmm. violated every fire code. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, it was so hot that the walls were sweating. The floor was sweating. Like, you couldn't even move without slipping. That's how hot the humidity was in there. Literally, she put on a dope, dope, dope set and collapsed after her last song. Like, security had to carry her off the stage downstairs. What? Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. That was a crazy day. That's called rocking the mic. Well, I'm about to say, that's called dedication. Like, you know, I got a whole... Little little Kim. Kim. Now I want to see Lil' Kim. Lil' Kim, you know what I mean? Definitely a legendary now. artist, man. But hearing that, yeah. you rocked the mic so hard that you fell out. Yeah, that's what's up. Energy. Like, she gave the energy the whole time. Didn't miss a step. Didn't miss a beat. Like, you know, all the real freaky shit. You know, back in the day, like, we got the real Kim. Right. <laughs> right. The Fish real Kim. Mm -hmm. Lil' yeah. Kim yeah. from Junior Mafia. Last Junior song. Mafia is the click. Boom, collapse, right? So she got finished with the last song. Took a step. So Wow. Man, that's uh, that's that's epic, but that's crazy too. Like that's a hell of a night, but then to see that at the end, that's that's wild. That's, that's wild. wild. Just you know what I'm saying? If anybody questions her um, you know, her MC <laughs> Right. Yeah, you don't. don't. <laughs> <Sorry. Sorry. laughs> performer. Leave it alone. You official. Oh yeah. All right, so going back to our um, to our locals because there's a lot of you know we we got a lot of artists in Cleveland, you know that. Mm -hmm. And um, what would be some you know um, what would be like one of the things that you would tell a, a, a new upcoming artist in Cleveland? You know what 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 should be their first steps? Um, get your paperwork together. Business. Like yeah, get your business together first. Like the moment that your hobby turns into a business. You should treat it and respect it as such. The same way you want the industry to respect your craft and your artistry, you have to respect yourself enough to get your business together. Because there's a lot of great artists and a lot of great talent, but they don't do their homework. So a lot of that comes with, you know, once you get your foot in the door, you know, we find out that they, they're not registered, they don't own their, their paperwork, mm -hmm. you know, they signed to two or three different bad deals with people. Some of them signed the deals out of town because of their friend or their affiliation. So you got to get your business together before you start to become building a brand or bringing music to people. And you got to network. Like, you can't listen to the opinions of your homeboys or your family listening to you telling you you're the dopest MC alive. Like, they're all yes men. Like, everybody believes in you because they're your friends. Like, get out there, network. Don't be afraid to take constructive criticism. Because right. once you get your foot in that door and somebody that you count on thinking you're about to get to you at the moment of your lifetime, and they be like, well, what else you got? And that's all you got. Pretty much dream deferred at that point. It's over. So, you know, you got to kind of get out there and network with people and, you know, build yourself up. But get your business together first. Like, do the homework. Do the research. If you can't read or you're not good at reading, ask somebody to show you. Like, get with somebody that can walk that path with you or at least take you down that road. That's kind of where we serve the purpose, you know, to bridge the gap between the business and the artist. So, not only do we have, help them get to where they need to be, we give them the tools needed to get them on their way. Right. So. Sheesh. Okay, that's all right. So that's for all you up and coming independent artists that's trying to make a way. First thing you need to do is your business because you know what? A lot of people don't do it first. First thing they do is get in the studio, right? Get in the studio, thousands make of music, on visuals, and studio time. They have no paperwork to back it up, so uh -huh. it does blow up, like he said. You well, what's, where's your paperwork at? Where now? You now your opportunities lost because you have no business behind you. So. I, I agree with that 100%. I, I'm, well, I'm taking losses, unnecessary well, You know, Cleveland was known as the, um, the the crooked capital for a long time. You know, it was a lot of artists that was taking good music and production from here, upstate, and they was getting the door closed on, but then their song was released by somebody else, so they heard their bars and other people's songs, and some of the production of other people's music, because they didn't have nothing copywritten, they had mm. nothing, nothing registered. So, you know, we, we a lot of artists got ripped off here, like, majorly, especially in the, like, late 90s. It was, it was almost like a common thing. So People come here and just, you know. Well, they know. They were going, even from here, going to Chicago, going to New York, you know, submitting music, sending tapes in, man. You know, back in the day, it was hard to get people to listen to your music. They would listen to it and hear something dope, but their 
idea didn't have you on the track. Your yeah. idea heard your track and said, hey, somebody this else sounds better than them on there. So right. they need it. Now, now, I'm glad you brought up the word markets because I think that there's a, um, a lot of people because, you know, I've been doing music, we've been doing music for a while as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think that individuals really understand um, what, market, what, what a market means. Now, I've been to Atlanta, I've been to New York, I've been to L.A., I've been all around. And from what I've been told about markets is that Ohio or this Midwest market is not the market that actually breaks artists. We're the market that actually follows the trends, that we follow what's hot. Meaning, um, I'll go to Atlanta, and of course, you know, Atlanta always got some shit going.